Yes, folks, it's Wednesday night, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and you know what that means? That means that it's uh, Quick Fix Golf. So we get together, and all of our gang, it's open house on Wednesday night, so it's open to our all our members so they can bring their guests. And um, check us out. Have a good time. We're going to have a great topic tonight. Darren DeMail is going to head up the topic. Who is a top 100 teacher? Yay, Darren. Yay. <laughs> and it's going to be about Horton Smith tonight. Is that not correct? Yes, that's correct. Good. Horton I, Smith. I didn't think I had the wrong files. <laughs> we would be the first time. Tell them what we want them to do there, Darren. What we need you to do is get your cell phone out and take a video of your golf swing, and you send it to us, and we're going to give you a free analysis, not a penny out of your pocket. Send it to quick service at quickfixgolf.com because we want you to play better golf now. Horton Smith. A lot of people might not know that he was also a member of the Ryder Cup team, 1929, 31, 33, 35, and 37. He had a run going, huh? His career Ryder Cup record was 3-0-1. and one. His only blemish, a half singles match against Bill Cox, 1935, who was the guy that beat Bobby Jones. So he must have been a pretty good player himself. So a lot of – I don't know how many of you heard about Horton Smith, but uh, old-timers like me have. And uh, – this is this is exciting. Go ahead, Darren. Take over, partner. You want me to send the bus over to you, or want me to move the slides? Or no, not yet. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of things that we can take away from him. You know, one of the awards that um, the PGA gives away is the Horton Smith Award, and that's the awards for um, for teaching. It's for contributing to the game and and help helping people learn the game. So if you get the Horton Smith Horton Award, Smith. it's a um, it's a pretty prestigious honor. So, um, but we're going to take a look at some of the things that he did. And, and you forgot to mention, Bobby, he's the first Masters winner. The well, first the person ever to win the Masters. Oh, wow. Yep. I saw that he won the Masters twice. I didn't notice that he, it was, it was, he was the first one to ever win it. The very first one to ever win. So, um, yeah, we're going to just take a look at some of the things that he, he'd like to do when it came to putting. And specifically, what he called the arching secret. And the arching secret is when you can see here, you get that um, the lead hand in more of an arched position. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to kind of lock up your hands and prevent the hands from from kind of flipping or um, or rotating the, the the face. And it really acts as, as a stabilizer. Uh, which I think is really important when it comes to uh, the putting stroke. You know, there's some players that are really handsy, and then there's some players that are, are stable with um, with the hands. And I prefer more of the stable um, hand position like Horton Smith has here, uh, keeping, keeping those hands nice and quiet. And if you throw me the bus, Bobby, I'll show you a few videos. All right. You got some videos? I'm gonna pull a fast one on you tonight. I was gonna to put Bobby Locke on there and a couple of them. Okay. <laughs> you ever heard of Bobby Locke? Of course. All right, can we see my screen? I see your screen. All right. We have enough time to get popcorn. Okie dokie. Get rid of some of these toolbars here. How do you move this toolbar over? Oh my goodness. There you go. Okay. Can you make your screen bigger? Can I? You, is it small? No, I think it's, gotta I, hit the, it, it might just be me. We, yeah, I, no, you got to hit the, 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 the button there. Okay. All right. So, all right. I see. There's a button to the right, folks. As you look at the front, of it, you'll see 81%. You now you see a plus and you see a minus. Just click on the plus and it'll get bigger. All right, go ahead. So here's one of the modern day players that kind of uh, uses the arching type of motion here and, and this is Steve Stricker 
And if you know anything about Steve Stricker, you can see how he's got the heel of the putter off of the ground. And what that does is it gets the shaft of the golf club closer to vertical, right? There's lots of different ways you can sit that putter down, different angles. And the more that you set it straight up and down, the more that that wrist is going to get into that arch position. So you can see here how the, the shaft of the putter just goes right up through his arms there. And to me, that's a really stabilizing effect when it comes to putting. It keeps those hands out of the picture and uh, prevents any kind of rotation that are going on there with, with the club face. So th there's lots of different ways to putt, but to me, this is going to give you the mo your best chance for success when you do get that putter where it's a little bit more vertical and it's not sitting on the on the heel heel itself. So that that's part of getting the hands in the arch position. Let's take a look at a couple other players. Um, you know, Ben Crenshaw was was known for swinging the putter. Let's see what we got here, Ben. <laughs> All right, so take, let's take a look at how the putter is moving back. And when you get your uh, your lead wrist arched, what's going to happen is the club face is going to come back what um, Smith would say is hooded. So there wouldn't be any opening of the club face or the putter face as it goes back. So you can see Crenshaw's putter face hasn't had any rotation as it goes back. All right, let's watch it again. There's no rotation at all. Uh, oddly enough, you can watch watch Crenshaw's putter. It kind of goes out a little bit. It has a little bit of a loop here. That's not what we're going to take away from tonight. We're going to take away that the putter face doesn't have any opening to it as it goes back and it goes through. So essentially, that putter has is looking in the same direction the whole entire time of the stroke. I'll give you another good example of what that'll look like from from the blimp view here. So this is kind of an overhead view. So if we watch that putter going back, Crenshaw's has got a little bit of a loop in there, but you can see with this putter here, it's still very square to the string line. And as it goes back into the ball and as it goes through, it's very square to the string line. And that's what uh, Horton Smith would be called hooding. So as that putter moves back, if it's moving in an arc, the face should have a little rotation to it. But you can see here, this uh, this gentleman is actually hooding it, very similar to what we saw with Crenshaw, and very similar to what Horton Smith would um, he would advertise as as your best chance to to hit a putt. Uh, let's see who else here. And then, you know, my favorite is going to be, you know, I'm a big Stockton fan. Dave Stockton is to me, one of the, the, the greatest putters ever to, to live. And a couple of things he does the same thing. He gets that left wrist in a locked position. And as he goes into it, he leads with that left wrist. That left wrist is the rudder. You can see what he's doing here. He said that's the one of the things his father had him do when he was younger, as he would lead with that left wrist. And you can see here how locked up that that left wrist is. That the the putter shaft is in line with that lead arm, where most people get a little flippy in there. They start throwing the putter with their hands, and um, and that's going to lead to some inconsistencies with direction and loft and energy control and all those things. So to me, uh, this is another great way to think about putting, especially with that lead hand. Everything we've talked about today is, uh, tonight is, is lead hand orientated. Watch how that lead hand leads. It's the rudder as that putter goes in. As opposed to where most people do at this, they've 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 leaned the putter back and the putter's pointing more towards their belly. And a lot of a lot of putters think that that's the, a good way to 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 roll it. But you know, to me, 
it just it leads to too much inconsistency. There's too much variable there. But there are a lot of putters that that do that, and they they do it well. Well, you got to remember in, in, in some of the data Stockton was playing, putters had seven degrees worth of loft on. Today, yeah, that's had... true, and that's yeah, then that's that's uh, evolved over time as well because you know the the agronomy of the golf course has changed to where you know the the greens are so fast nowadays. Back when you were playing, Bobby, they, you, they were like it was like Velcro, wasn't it? Well, it was just like as I was reading about Horton Smith today. He felt like he'd trap it and he'd pop it. And when he popped the ball, he got it airborne in a hurry. But, but realized that, you know, those old blade putters they had had seven degrees loft on them. And I remember Carson Solheim telling me one time, he said, uh, of course, for those who don't know, he's the guy who created Ping. Uh, he, he said that uh, you needed seven degrees loft in those days because the ball was sitting down in the grass and you had to get it airborne and then roll it. Where today it's, it's so much different. Like you said, I mean, these greens, some of these greens are, I mean, in a in a in a you know in a clinic. I mean, they're 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 not even real grass, or they're grass, but they're you know they're they're born out of a chemistry set. <laughs> I don't know what I'm, what I'm looking for is too big for a Cuban, but anyway. Um, but there's lots of ways, to, lots of different ways to putt. There really are. Speaking of what what you said, that popping motion. Here's. Here's a picture of Snedeker. I also think that this is a great way to um, to putt. Watch, watch how big the backswing is, and watch the follow through. It's relatively short, and to me, that's how you get good energy control. That little popping motion there. You know, if we wa take a look at um, Gary Player, watch this putting motion here. Talk about popping. Look at that backswing and look at the follow through. Hardly any. And that's definitely indicative of that kind of older uh, putting style because the agronomy was way different. So, you know, I think nowadays this is probably a little bit too short of a follow through, but I still think that that follow through should be shorter than the backswing there. Backswing there. You see his shoulders go forward, you see his upper body. Watch yeah. his upper body as he strokes the ball. See yeah. that? He yeah. cold pulls it. Yeah. He traps it and pulls it. Yep, there's there's lots of different ways to putt, but all good putters are gonna get the ball started on their line. You know, the line that they want to get. You watch Crenshaw here. Just watch how the putter loops. So what does that tell you about what's important? Watch that putter goes out, right? That putter goes out and it loops. But the face is remaining square to where he's trying to go. And that's what you'll see uh, across the board with good putters. Their ball starts on the intended line, however they get it there. Look how his ball is out near the toe, and then when he actually makes contact because of his loop, it hits it in the center of the club face. Yep. Right. Would you ever teach that? Probably not. To me, that's a variable that you don't want to have. But, you know, Ben Crenshaw has been doing it a long time, and he believes in it, and he trusts it, and he's made it work. Right? I think the average golfer needs to take a little different approach to where they're eliminating some of those variables. But um, let's go back to that Stricker one. And he does pretty much the same thing. He's He actually pulls his putts. So you can see kind of where this putter is pointing here. Watch, see that we just draw a line straight down. He's actually aiming. A little right. All right. Well, actually, not too that bad. Not, not that bad there. But he is a little bit of a pull, a pull putter where he aims up. Uh, I can't kill your microphones there because you got them. Oh. Uh, but he is a little bit of a pull putter. But um, regardless, good good putters know where their start line is, and, and they figure a way to get it um, on that start line. 
All right. Um, now, what, what, you know, now what, if we look at the regular guy or anybody who's listening in tonight. Um, hold on, I'm trying to, there you go. Um, you, know, you see these things you buy that are, it's like a little uh, wall you know, that you put the, the putter up against. It has an 18 degree arc to it. If people yes. are buying those things, trying to swing the putter on an 18 degree arc. Um, I, I just think there's actually two swings from four to five feet. That's why I like to use a putter that's center shafted. I feel like you have to do what, what you're showing here tonight. You've got to keep the club face facing where you want to go. If you want to be good at four foot putts, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and you can you see on this stroke putt. here, this, this putter arcs a little bit to the inside, back and through. And um, a lot of good putters do it this way. There's no doubt, but you're absolutely right on those short ones. You cannot have, you, you can't have that variable in there. And that's really the putts that realistically you should be making is, is those short ones. From, from five, five, seven feet are, are kind of the big, the big ones there. So. Well, Trying to get this. Up. There you go. The uh, let's open up the phones and have some questions from somebody, because I know they're going to have questions. I think also I wanted to say that this arch motion in the left hand, I think, is the reason why so many people are trying to put crosshand in that because it almost forces you to have that arch position in your left hand, and you can pull with the back of your left hand. That's why. See, there you go, right there. I like it a lot. I, I I know I use it. I use the leading hand low, and it it really has helped me a lot. Keeps me from uh, from from uh, taking a, swinging at it rather than just sliding the sliding the head through. It does bend that wrist. Keeps it bent. Yeah. So that that's kind of the arch, which you see there, and this would be kind of. Um, a resting position and then this is where I see a lot of people putt from they get that putter way too low with the the heel on the ground and the toe off of the ground and we saw with Stricker it's just the complete opposite in there so yeah, but um, you you could look at characters like Aoki remember him the Jap Japanese oh player? yeah yep he had it way off right he had the toe sticking up in the air I couldn't believe how horrible his putting stroke was, and he got a lot of putts in the hole. So he sure you did. Have, you have Arnie. Do you have Arnie putting on your screen there? Uh, no, I don't think I have him putting. I don't. What about Jack? Do you have him? Jack Nicholas putting. Putting, I yeah. don't. What about Tiger? You got I wouldn't Jack, want him. Tiger. <laughs> I wouldn't want anybody mimicking that. I, I just I think this it's just an old school way of doing it. And um well and if you don't mind, I'll just say bottom line, what what Garrett's getting across here is that by arching the hand like Horton Smith started doing, all they're trying to do is to lock their wrists so that they don't have a lot of motion in the wrist because if you're moving your hands, you're moving the club face. If you move into club face, you're in trouble. You see, like Tiger doesn't arch the wrist a lot, doesn't look like. But he holds the triangle together real well. See, his triangle right there stays a triangle. But a lot of people, they get flippy in the hands right there, and the shaft is further up than what his is. Yeah, exactly. And I would personally, I, I don't, I don't like it that it's pointing too much at his belly. I like more of what we saw with that Stockton picture earlier, where the handle's more here, and the back of that lead hand is is a little bit more dominant. So Tiger lets the putter swing a little bit, and as if you've heard him talk about putting, he likes to feel that the toe of the putter closes through the hit. So you can see kind of the the swing of the putter, where I think in a good stroke the toe and the heel are moving at the same exact 
uh, pace. Right, the toe and the heel. You know, he might he might feel like the toe's going over, but it might not be doing that. Yep. So you know, and that's once again feel versus real, and that's that's what he wants to feel. He wants to feel that the toe closes. Um, it, it might be he hangs on too much and he bails them all out to the right, so he learned to let the toe go in order to keep that from happening. You know, you never know. That's what, that's why it's so difficult. You're trying. Everybody's you know desperately trying to pick up these golf tips and you know what what is the magic sauce, and you don't realize that you know different guys find it different ways, and gals. And we got Ruthie with us, and. Oh, go, there you go. See that right there? See, I like that. I do too. That's why I use it. Yep, left hand low. I'm telling you. I can't do it, but if I had it to do over, I would have. I'll tell you what, it took a little time to get used to it, but it really comes in really, really handy as, as lag putts. I very seldom tree putt anymore. I putted 60 years the other way. I just can't, I just can't, I don't have any, I don't have the feel cross-handed. I might use it from two feet if it was to win the Masters and I was afraid I was going to pull it left. <laughs> <laughs> See, Anybody got a question? The first yeah, picture you showed was of, was of, um, of Horton Smith, do you have any uh, any video of Horton swing, putting swing? Video. Yeah, good luck. Good Did luck with that, Larry. Larry. Back there, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> there's a few. I know it was, I know it was very early, but there's some Bobby Jones out there, you know. Yeah, there's a few, but there's there's really not much that I could. I, and I looked. I, I just couldn't find any. Um, yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's rare, but. Well, I couldn't either. So I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll look today. When did he die? Go ahead. Who's got a question? He he died in the mid '60s. I want to say. Yeah, 1963. I think I read. So, Darren, in the video you showed of Gary Player, I think he was demonstrating that he was taught by Bobby Locke. He had that right foot back and Bobby Locke claimed that he tried to hook every putt. And that's kind of what Gary player is doing in that video there. Uh, Bobby, you mentioned you were going to talk about Bobby Locke and I know the grasses were different. It's a different era, but he was heralded as one of the greatest putters of all time. Yeah. And, and I was, I was, you know, I was about to say that too. I said, you know, he's using the Bobby Locke stance. And that, that makes sense what you're saying now. To me because he, because I don't remember Gary Player being that close, but he would use that close stance a lot. But he's probably demonstrating, like you said, because I'm surprised he's moving his upper body as much as he is. And it's, Bobby Locke, you know, had a lot of motion in his hands. You know, it's like a great pool player. I mean, they, they might have certain fe feel and they have you know, a certain talent and they might violate some of the principles, but it doesn't mean they can't be successful. That's why I always say it's a risk factor. Yep, and and you know when I show videos, there's there's certain things that are uh, exaggerated to see because subtleties never work. So this is definitely Gary Player talking about Bobby Locke, where I got this video from. But what I like to see when I show this is the length of backswing versus the follow through, and how that affects energy control. But you're absolutely right with kind of the way he's got the, the feet and that, that closed set up there. He was this is definitely not how he typically putts. And, and Bobby Locke always played with a tie on. Like uh Walter Hagen. Walter Hagen yep. always wore a tie. Yep. They dressed up to play golf. Anybody else got a question? <laughs> That's a rowdy group tonight. I'm just curious uh, when you're trying to keep the club face, you know, square on the short putts back and through. I, I've tried to do that, and I, you know, with the blast golf sensor, and it's just really hard to to keep it at zero. So I'm just wondering, what is 
an okay amount of rotation open and close, you know, in the backswing and, and forward swing. I mean, what so should Paul, we be shooting yeah, for? Yeah, two, two degrees plus or minus. So two degrees, what, what that means is that from about five feet, if your putter face is open more than two degrees, you will miss the hole on a straight putt. So that's kind of, to me, your, your uh, range of variance uh, with whether you're open to or you're close to, you'll still kind of catch the edge of the hole. So anything more than that is too much. Now, depending on the length of the stroke, there's a, um, a two to one ratio there with that, meaning that if you're going back 10 inches with the stroke, then the putter face should be opening a maximum of five degrees. So the blast putting is, is something that I use and, and I love, and you can really measure how how far the putter's moving, how much it's rotating, how much it's closing. And um, But to me, yeah, I mean, if you're opening the putter 10 degrees, you better be closing it 10 degrees to get to zero. So to me, why open it, why close it? Just keep it at zero, zero, zero. But that's just yeah. You know, when I try to do the zero zero zero, what I feel like is I'm manipulating it with my hands just to keep the club face from sort of rotating with my body. Yep, that's the that's the hooding secret that Horton Smith would talk about, where it you're gonna feel with with your hands. It's a counterclockwise for a right-handed person. It's a counterclockwise turning of the face, right? So if we take a look at what um if we take a look at this here's what i call the mini circle here's the mini circle this would be a clockwise opening of the face hold on let me get it back a little bit yeah so right here this would be a clockwise opening of the face right here and what horton smith would say is that on the way back you're going to feel like the heel goes this way and then the toe goes that way. That's the feeling or the sensation that you have. And Paul, you're absolutely right. That's what you're going to feel. You're going to feel like it's a little bit of a manipulated stroke as it is because the putter is staying along the, the, um, the target line as opposed to a regular golf swing where the, the club moves away from the target line, right? It just seems like it's introducing more moving parts than less. You know, adding that manipulation instead of just trying to keep your, your hands quiet and letting, you know, the club open and close naturally in your backswing. Well, there, there are and, people and, that would tell you that's the way to go. There's people you know, that would tell you that's the way to go. But you last ask Lanny Watkins, he'll tell you, no, keep the face going where, it's, where the ball's going to go from four to six feet. You can't help it on a 30-foot putt from have, not having some rotation. Because the, the stroke is so big. Yep. Do you, have any, do you have anything of, of Billy Casper and his pop stroke? Wow, a that's a good one. That's a good one. You could pot that guy. You're telling me he had that zebra putter, and, he, and he'd hold yeah. it up against his left leg and pop it. Yeah. He kept the face hooded, I think. Oh, yeah. But you got to realize they, put, they were putting on, you know, different greens those days. Much different greens. There are a ton of different types of putters out there. When somebody asks you, and you must get this question from time to time, what putter should I select? Because there's literally hundreds of them out there. Yep. So it depends on the stroke that you're trying to achieve. To me, you need some type of face balance putter, meaning that the way the putter's weighted, it's it's prohibitive to let the toe or the the heel move at all. It's it's um, what you'd see in a mallet type of putter. Uh, let me see, I got it here somewhere. Uh, where is it? It's in here somewhere. Yeah, so it depends on the the um, the stroke that you're trying to make. I know, Bobby, you've got that nice picture of it. What's that? Of the um, the the pictures of the putters, toe balanced, uh, face balanced. 
but yeah, so uh, to me, a face balance putter is, is what you're going to look for to minimize any kind of uh, face rotation there. Yeah, yeah another one of the Anyway, I had it in here somewhere. There you See, go. There's the difference there where this is this is more of a straight back, straight through, no rotation. This putter is going to have some swing here to it. It's going to have a little bit of rotation of the face and a little bit of arc to it. So, um, yeah, you just got to match it up to what you're trying to do or what your tendencies are. One of the things Phil Mickelson does for while he's practicing is if he starts to get too much rotated with his putter face, he'll just practice with different putters. So if his face gets too active, he'll practice with this one. And his, if, if the face isn't active enough, he'll start practicing with this one. Right, so it, it's a it's a tool that you can use to to um, manipulate uh, the stroke for sure. So you do want to have something that's matched towards what you're trying to do at least. Aaron um, Crenshaw's putter is toe balanced, but yet he was keeping his face straight. Is he, that's a m big manipulation? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. That's that's a good point there. So he's kind of going against. You know, I don't. Did, did they have mallets back when you grew up, Bobby? <laughs> Uh, some of the first things you saw that were different than a blade putter was what you see right here, the answer putter from Ping when that first came out. Uh, but I always putted with a blade putter for years. For years. But did they have mallets back then? Were there that many options oh, back then? I, I don't or did Crenshaw just... Holy Christmas. Odie Christman, he had mallets. Yeah, there, there, there you go. There you go. Odie Christman. Yeah, there were wooden mallet putters back in the old, old days. <laughs> that, that zebra was a mallet, wasn't it? Yeah, the zebra was a mallet putter. There you go. You're right. You're right. I just, I was brought up by an old guy that it was an old blade putter. He had the Tommy armor. Uh, and he taught me how to use different parts of the face. For instance, if you had a downhill right to left putt, he'd make me putt the ball off the toe of the golf club because it took some speed off the golf ball. If you had a left to rider uphill, I'd hit it more in the heel. So we use different parts of the club face depending on the putt. So now, now I'm really confuse you. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, today's putters, you can't miss hit. If you buy a modern day putter, you can't miss hit it. You can't hit it on the toe. You can't hit it at the heel. It's one giant sweet spot. Yep. Yeah, you see, well, and, and, and he taught me, you know, things like you're putting uphill. Hold the putter tighter. You're putting downhill. Hold the putter looser in your hands. Um, who's the greatest? Who's the greatest lady putter that we can remember? I don't know, but I took her out. <laughs> yeah, he probably stole her putter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who was who was the great lady putter? I don't honestly don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't. Don't know. I remember some of the old, you know, the, the old time, the beginning ladies. I saw them all, you know, Ricky Wright. I saw. Oh, Nancy Kathy Lopez Woodward, was fantastic. Let's see. What Nancy is Lopez your was opinion? Fantastic. Oh, we got it. We got it. We got something in the peanut gallery here. What is your opinion on putting with more open stance? Are there any advantages, disadvantages to it? Any examples of a tour player with a slightly open stance? Well, Darren's old boss, right? Jack was still with an open stance. Yep. I do the yep. same thing. The old guy that taught me how to play, he had an open stance. So that's why I had an open stance. I think when when you start to get your stance open or closed, your eye line starts to change a little bit because your putter is not going to be square to your to your toe line. And and to me, that's where your eye starts to become confused. So I, I like to see a very square putting stroke, not open or closed. But um there's been lots of lots of different ways over the years you know what lauren roberts method was lauren roberts is exactly what we're talking about tonight uh he was more of a hood arched putter very similar to crenshaw am i muted you can see here rory he's he's pretty square there with his stance. But um, to
to me, I, I like to keep it simple. I like to keep everything with the least amount of uh, variables as, as possible. I still think even like with taught in the old days, like I was, I mean, the club face is everything. If you can't control the club face on the putter, you know, how it's going to impact the ball, what, you know, where it's, you know, which way it's leaning forward, leaning back, shot open. I mean, you've got to have a, you, your eyes somehow have to be able to see where the club face really is. And, and that sounds stupid, but I've seen people with their club faces wide open and they don't even realize it. They go, oh, no, look straight to me. So, uh, you know, putting something down to make sure that you're exactly at 90 degrees to the path and you can keep it there from four feet to six feet and in. I mean, if you can't make four footers, you're in trouble. Any other questions? If not, we'll call it a night. Yeah. Maybe the presenter again. The mic is on. Yep. What Good job, guys. Slides? What do we had? See, ball. Yeah, his ball position was four. There he is, right there. Yep. Look at those pants. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. I wonder if Barbie's got a pair of pants like that. Oh, I'm looking at You have a pair Barbie of pants like that, Barbie? I think I'm going to buy some. <laughs> Why not? You at least look like a golfer, that's for sure. All right, gang. I'll send out the uh, email on the uh, on the discount. For All right. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, the orange, the orange Whip. And we got a big guest next week, so it'll be more fun. Well, this hey, was thanks. fun. Yeah, great. Thank oh, you. this was great. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Good night.